Hey guys, Sharpen here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to turn simple melodies like this into pentatonic drones that sound something like this. So the main concept of this type of drone is that when you use the pentatonic scale, which is a five note scale that is very consonant and harmonic, um, you basically have a lot of uh, maneuvering space because this scale uh, doesn't force you to choose a specific set of notes. Uh, you can play all of the notes uh, of your original scale on top of the pentatonic scale and it should sound just fine. So that's why it's great uh, as a drone maker uh, to be underneath your tracks. So the first thing I'm going to do is to show you how to make the pentatonic scale. Um, so if you're in a major key, you want to create the major pentatonic scale, which is um, a major key of the first, a major chord of the first note in the key that you're in. So let's say we're in D sharp uh, major. So I'm going to create the D sharp major chord, which is D sharp G and A sharp. And all you, want, all you need to do is to just add a note uh, two half steps above the first note of your chord, which is D sharp. So we're adding F, which is two half steps above. And you want to add um, a note two half, te half steps above uh, the last note of your chord, which is A sharp. So we're adding C. And that's the major pentatonic scale. Now, if you want to create the minor, all you need to do is to just create uh, the major pentatonic scale and start playing it three half steps below. So if you start playing this scale from C, which is three half, half steps below uh, D sharp, you get the C minor pentatonic scale. So now that we know how to create a pentatonic scale, we can move on and start making this uh, drone. So what you want to do is to choose different types of source sounds. Um, let's start with a sine wave. And uh, this one is fairly simple, it just has no sustain, it has the decay of one second and some release, and it has an LFO that controls the fine tune to add some vibrato. It sounds like this. And what you want to do is to just uh, draw a short MIDI clip that plays a few notes from the pentatonic scale, like this one here. And then you want to add a bunch of effects afterwards. So I have an effects chain here. It has quite a lot of effects. Uh, at first we have some distortion and what you want to do is to keep the distortion mild so only when you're playing a lot of notes together you get uh, a distorted signal like this. You can hear that the distortion is barely noticeable. Then I've added some delay on ping pong mode and on band pass so that it doesn't capture all of the frequencies from the original sound. Um, just to add some more repeating notes. like this. Then on top of that there's uh, re the first reverb. Uh, it's at 65% wet and it's fairly long, it's at 26 seconds. You don't, want it, you don't want it to be way too wet because you want to retain some of that distortion. Uh, and then there's another reverb which is uh, a bit shorter on 14 seconds and it's on 100% wet. And then I've added uh, another uh, distortion since the sign is very clean, so I've decided to add some more slight distortion to make it sound a bit more dirty. So this creates a reverb that is slightly distorted. And you can hear something similar in tracks like Skrillex's Fire Away, where he starts the song with just a plug that plays a few notes that has a lot of reverb and distortion, which creates a really unique uh, drone. So that is pretty similar, just the sound that we're making has uh, a bit more uh, wet signal to it. So after you have uh, this sound, all you want to do is just go to Edison and record your MIDI pattern with all of the effects. So now that I have it recorded, uh, I have one tip for you. Uh, you want to make sure that you're keeping the tail uh, of the river because this part usually sounds the best. It has uh, the least amount of distortion if you're looking for that. But if you want the, distortion, the distorted part, just go to the start of the signal 
and you should get something very distorted. Now if you for example normalize uh, the end of your sound, like right here, you get something that's uh, deeper and has less uh, high-end frequencies, which can sound really great on ambient uh, type of music. So what you want to do is to just set it uh, into your uh, playlist and I'm going to show you briefly how you can do this with different types of um, uh, source material. So let's say we have this gamelan bell that sounds like this. So what you want to do is to try and experiment with different types of uh, source sounds and you want to try and make um, the MIDI slightly different so that you're getting a uh, different um, timbre to your uh, drones and that way you can combine them and get interesting results as if you were playing some sort of drone melody on top. So since this sound has more uh, frequencies than just a sine, which are here, uh, you don't want to add too much distortion, so I'm just going to disable the second distortion. And then the sound I'm going to get is this sound. Which is already distorted enough with just uh, one distortion plugin. So you want to do exactly the same thing, just um, export it and, and you should get something similar to this if you normalize um, the end, the tail of the reverb. So after you, you've exported it and put it into your playlist, you want to send it into a mixer track. Uh, I've called it the limiter channel and basically it just has two limiters. And what they do is they just automate um, the gain to go up as uh, the tail fades away. So basically we're limiting it to 0 dB so that the volume cannot pass 0 dB. And we're going to increase the volume so that even in the quieter parts, we're going to get something more even in volume. So here's an example of the loud part. Here's an example of the quiet part, which sounds fairly loud as well because the gain is being increased throughout uh, as the sample decays. So once you just export this part, you can get an, a drone that's more um, consistent in volume. So after exporting, I've got this drone. So the original sounded like this, which is highly inconsistent. You have loud parts and quiet parts, and the new one sounds like this. All of the time, thanks to the limiter. Now, after you've done that, you want to go ahead and send it to your new mixer track. I've chosen to call it post-processing, and in it, I've just removed uh, the low frequencies that are being caused by the distortion. You don't want any rumble in the low end. I've increased the highs by a bit, and I've added another EQ to just remove uh, the frequencies from like 200 hertz or so to like um, 800 hertz or so, so that uh, the mids where you play uh, most of your melodies uh, won't get too muddy. And then I've just added a limiter that is going to uh, sidechain it to a kick drum. So without the effects, it would sound like this. And with the effects, it sounds like this. Now I have here a bunch of different drones that I've already made, um, so I'm going to play them to you so you can hear uh, the difference that you can create by just playing different notes or using different sounds. So these first two are just different notes of the same sign instrument. And this is a different instrument, this is the gamelan bell. So you can get uh, wildly different results by just doing that. And then once you add um, a ghost kick to sidechain uh, your uh, drone to, with a limiter, uh, you can create some nice movement. And then once you add uh, drums, for example, you can hear that movement a bit better. And this can already be the base of a very nice um, future garage or ambient track. You can also add some ambience, like I've chosen uh, this one, which is just uh, a jungle ambience. It sounds great with the um, drone. And basically all you need to do is just lower its volume so you can make sure that you have room for a bass or for a plug sound, a melody or anything you want to add on top. So without it, it would sound very empty. 
but with it it shouldn't sound uh, too muddy and too full uh, you want to know how to control it and then you can also add dry parts and smaller parts where you have for example just the drones and drums uh, just the drums and the bass and sometimes uh, add the melody with the drone add the melody without the drone and that way you can create uh, interesting uh, parts for your track without making uh, the drone uh, too muddy in the mix and too uh, disruptive and that is pretty much it if you found this tutorial helpful make sure to give it a thumbs up let me know in the comments below what subject do you want me to cover up next time